I think that every Flint person has a little bit of activism in them. It's in our DNA. Your administration and the emergency managers you appointed to control the city of Flint gambled with the health and welfare of the people in your city in order to save money. Our government has failed us on every single level. They poisoned the wrong city. Hundreds packed a hall at Ferris State University to sound off on a permit request from bottle water giant Nestle. People's voices must be heard. The issue is that they are privatizing water. They're taking water and they're selling it for a profit. When there are people going without water. Water is the new oil. Nestle's not just a water bottling company, it's a water privatizing company. There are some things by their very nature are public. And when you try to run those as a private operation, you end up with bad results. Water privatization is the loss of public control over water, and it takes a, a variety of forms. Once you lose the public democratic control over that water, it's gone into private hands, and then it's going to be to those who can afford it. Flint is a tragic example of the worst of water management. Uh, we were switched by our emergency manager from Detroit's water to the Flint River. To cut costs, um, people's lives were put at risk, and of course, people have been dramatically and terribly impacted. What makes you think that our water is safe to drink now as opposed to what it was a few months ago? Now the tragedy upon travesty is that they have to pay quite exorbitant water rates for water they can't use from their tap. People who put dollars over the fundamental safety of the people do not belong in government. Trust me, and I wish I didn't have to say this, there are going to be more water fights like this in the future. Today is day 1,252 since we've had clean water. April 25th, 2014, they switched our water from the safe Detroit source that we were on to the toxic Flint River. One day I started filling up the tub, it was around February of 2015, and it started turning blue-green, and it hasn't stopped. Even though we are 45% at the poverty line, we pay the highest rates in the United States. We pay eight times the national average for water that we can't use. It's not like we want bottled water. Nobody wants to live like this. I've been mid-recipe before and run out of bottled water, and I'm not going to put tap water in there. We have to make sure that we have enough water, and if not, then we have between noon and six to rush over to one of the water pods to get in line to pick up our rations, our cases of water to use for everyday everything. If we didn't have bottled water as a safety option or a backup, as a wet Band-Aid for Flint, our pipes would have been fixed a long time ago. Maybe we'd have safe water by now. When water is treated like a commodity, people die. Shutoffs in Detroit is not about the residential debt. Here's the plan. It's about corporate taking over and privatizing the water. Amen. That's the intent. So you need to know how to fight back. What I worry about long term, and I've seen this in other parts of the world, is that people say, I don't trust the tap water. I don't know that I ever will again. So even when the tap water is safe at a future time, then I don't want to put tax money into good, clean, safe public water. So who ends up winning in this thing? The private water companies that get to come in and set a huge price for their private water. So Nestle is the biggest bottled water company in the world. It represents many uh, bottled water companies and its tentacles are everywhere and it creates massive amounts of pollution and plastic and so on, privatizes water wherever it goes. It's very much part of the agenda of privatization and deregulation that so many of our governments are picking up. And basically it says, trust these corporations, they'll set the tone, they'll monitor things, they'll do all the right things environmentally and so on. And so you're leaving it to the private companies like Nestle to make policy around our lives.
Nestle has plans to nearly double the amount of water they pull from a West Michigan spring from 250 to 400 gallons a minute. The water is being drawn from a well in Everett. The company behind the Ice Mountain Water brand says it won't hurt the environment, but some fear the impact could cause major problems down the road. Everett was a great place to grow up. I loved growing up here. It was a tight community. When Nestle first came, it divided our community. People I'd known my whole life all of a sudden knew that I was fighting Nestle and they wanted the plant here and so they weren't talking to me. There's uh, 170 acres in here that's owned by Nestle and you get break over the ridge there and it's well PW101. In the fall of 2000, a Nestle Corporation announced that they were coming into the area and start drawing water. So the question was, how is their operation going to affect the, the, the wells in the vicinity and the surrounding bodies of water? So I started the investigation in, into that. Well, Jim, this has got to be the deepest part of this. There's four inches of water. There's no trout, there's no other fish, there's no crayfish, no signs of any aquatic life. So in effect, Nestle has reduced the flow of water to these streams and in effect has destroyed what was once an ecological wonder is no longer there. How can you trust Nestle when they come up and tell you what a wonderful organization they are and they're not hurting the environment when in fact we're finding out they just killed two trout streams? So we ended up with transport station. We're losing our water. We, some people say, oh, but we got new ball diamonds and a few new things. Okay, things we already had. I think there's more people now that feel that they were taken in and they should have, we should have stood up to them in the beginning. We don't have anything against business. Water is not a commodity for sale. It is a sustainable force for life. I think it's immoral. And I think of all the people that made this town generation after generation, and this company just blew in here and turned not only the tight community upside down, but they're also ruining our creeks and, and water system, and I think it, it just took one company to do it. Here we have a foreign corporation. They've taken hundreds of millions, if not billions, of, of the cleanest, coldest water in, on Earth. And they pay absolutely nothing for it. And then they're profiting, making us, been estimated, a half a million dollars to a million and a half dollars every day. Here in Flint, the water crisis is a manifestation of a political crisis. We have a water bill problem, we have a toxic water problem, and we have a democracy problem. This has been a pretext to come in and steal our assets and hand them off to corporate interests. And if we don't step up and take action, years from now we're going to be looking at late Michigan Inc., Lake Superior LTD, Lake Ontario Corp. We're not interested in that. There were girls' families to stay in a contaminated playground for a long, long time. We've had this water. All right, here we are, ready for an exciting day at a summit about water, all things water. Is this how it had to be to gentrify our city? I bring you greetings from the poison and occupied city of Flint. Michigan. If we don't do anything today, we hope we can prove to you that the Flint water crisis is alive and well. It has not gone away. Yeah. 
And I'm hoping that when we come out of this, we will take this issue of privatization, which we all share. Everybody didn't get poison, but everybody can be taken over. The greatest travesty for my mind here in Flint is that you are paying for public water that you can't drink and bottled water that is taken from a source just about two hours away where transnational company Nestle is making millions of dollars from your suffering. We don't need to buckle under to the pressure of laws that are favoring private corporations to take over public utilities. This is where Nestle's operation, see the turkeys out here? Th th those aren't turkeys, Jeff. Those are CEOs from Nestle out on tour. Oh. We will not let the people down. We're going to continue to fight. We're going to continue to stand up. We're going to continue to speak out. We're going to continue to take back what rightfully belongs to us. And I refuse to let my children suffer. It does make a difference when people make their voices heard. It's a people fight, and everybody's participation is needed.